After burning out from their digital careers, Ellen Wong and Samantha Williams realized how disconnected they had become from their bodies and intuition. I met Ellen Wong years ago while I was working with Oprah. She was a superstar creative at an agency that was helping us with various projects. I remember thinking what a cool, smart, and brilliant woman. What I didn't know is that she and I were kindred spirits. We had both suffered the loss of our fathers, and we both had a deeper spiritual calling that we'd soon find out in 2018. Ellen met Samantha at work, the same agency that was helping with the Oprah projects. Sam was on the digital marketing end. Over time, Sam's body was shutting down and she was constantly sick. She just wanted to feel better. In the spring of 2018, Sam and Ellen left their corporate careers and decided to create a women's self-care brand. They founded Daughters, a company devoted to helping women get curious, conscious, and committed to self-healing. Opportunities to try new healing modalities started to appear, and it was not long before Ellen found the practice of breathwork and Samantha found Reiki. And soon after, they began the Woo New podcast. They were exploring different therapies and ideas that helped them reconnect us back to ourselves. They felt that it was such a transformative experience that like us, they wanted to demystify all things Woo Woo and share what they are learning. We're looking forward to talking about their seeker journeys, breathwork, Reiki, tarot, and much more. So good to see you guys. You too. I know. Hey, Karen. I'm just excited to have these deep conversations. Yeah. With like-minded people. Same, yeah. same. Thank you so much. We're, yeah. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. Oh, <laughs> oh good. We are too. Good. So let's talk about your respective journeys, Ellen and Sam, from your corporate careers to these spiritual healers, teachers, and really business women. Ellen, let's start with you. What's your story and what led to your transformation? I was thinking about this for a while. It seems like such, it's like, far out in the distance already, but really it's only been two years or so. You hear about all these like awakening stories where, you know, people have this like transformative overnight sort of thing. Like they get some vision or whatever that just suddenly like blows the doors open. And you know, it's like they're a totally different person the next day. It was definitely not that for me. I feel like mine started in 2016 when I got promoted at my work to become the executive creative director at this digital agency that both Sam and I worked at. I got promoted to this role, you know, and it's kind of like the basically the end of the road if you're a creative in that particular <laughs> you know that agency there's nowhere else to go you know unless you just jump ship and start your own when i got promoted i think all these questions about like do i want this did i ever want this like you know all of that start started coming in and it made me realize that like i literally had just been on this like escalator like i wasn't consciously climbing the corporate ladder i wasn't consciously trying to you know grow and evolve my career it was just happening on autopilot and it's like i'm not saying that to like toot my own horn or anything like that but i literally feel like you and i have both lost a father right robin and i i feel like in hindsight it was almost like his hand sort of just guiding me through the career and bringing these opportunities to me and it it was almost kind of like i didn't even have to think about where it was that i wanted to go i was just going you know so i elevated my career really quickly and i finally got this promotion and it was the first time I was like I don't know if I want this you know I never really wanted this but then what the hell am I doing here then (laughs) you know what I mean and like and so it became the beginning of this like existential crisis that rolled into the next year you know 2017 and I got married in March that year I took that time as an excuse to basically jump ship for about a month and just take time off because I was already burning out by that point and also just feeling a lot of imposter syndrome coming up because I didn't know why I was there really. And I didn't know if I was like meant for this job. And it almost felt kind of like, why am I getting this when so many other people really want this, you know? And it it was a lot of that stuff that was starting to come up for me. And it just made me feel like I don't deserve this. Like, I don't know why I'm here. I don't know what I'm doing. And I was busting my ass to try to prove to myself that I needed to be there or that I was worthy to be there. And people pleasing, like people pleasing to a crazy degree and so I took a month off got married went on this beautiful honeymoon and then the day I came back I remember I walked back into the office that day was like literally just being tossed right back into the fire I was in a meeting getting screamed at by the client 
<laughs> like everything was falling apart. It was almost kind of like, you know, like that month hadn't happened. And so that, I think that was really the point that I started going, okay, I need to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you know, I just need to get out as fast as possible. And I don't know what the hell I can do. But by that point, I had already started meditating. And I would call myself a meditator, but really it was very much a 10 minutes, maybe one week, maybe I'll do a streak of three days, you know, another 10 minutes a day. You know, it was like, that was to me what meditation was. For me, it was just a coping mechanism. Finally, like fast forward to the end of that year, I had already started thinking about this idea of creating some sort of self-care brand for women like me who are burnt out, hate their jobs. I was like, all right, perhaps I can help people just like me because I need it myself. So I'm sure there's other people out there that are feeling this way too. And Sam and I had been working on this like Lego account together at that time. So I had been hearing her stories and she was like super overworked as well. And we were like kind of already like a, a team. So that's how I got kind of got to know Sam through the agency. And at the end of that, year in November, I remember taking a trip to Joshua Tree and I had never done a tarot reading before in my life. But in Joshua Tree, I found this woman, she came over to the house and that reading, it was like turning on the lights almost, you know? And I think in that reading, it was super clear to me, I need to leave my job. I, I need to spend more time in nature specifically. And she really emphasized that too. And that all started coming through. So that really gave me the courage, I think, and almost kind of like the green light or the thumbs up to just do it. And again, little did I know that I think my dad was really the one sort of orchestrating all of this, but I really felt confident at that moment, like scared shitless, but still confident, like this is the move I need to make. And it wasn't until I think April of the next year that I finally jump ship and Sam and I have been talking this whole time I think we had one night in January where we we're like commiserating about just how miserable we were in our jobs and she was expressing to me that she wanted to leave I was expressing to her that I wanted to as well I had this like seed it was literally just like self-care for women let's create a store <laughs> like, you know, that was it that was as far as I had like really concepted out so I asked her like would you want to even build this with me she agreed and so that really was kind of like the talk that was really what kind of created created daughters at that fateful like January night when we're both of us were stuck in the office at midnight burning the midnight Which oil. will do that to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's been so cool to know that like April we quit our jobs. The very next day we went to go see a lawyer to draw up partnership plans. And again, no real concept of what we are creating at all. I, and in hindsight, I'm like, why did we do that? <laughs> like, it seems so, you know, like something we would do like way after like we had a real concept. But and then that's really where the planning started happening for daughters. But really, again, in hindsight, looking at it, it was really the beginning of both of our healing journeys. Sounds like to me too, that tarot reading for you, what I like to say to Karen a lot is that it's like an unlocking. There's like yes. an unlocking of your plan. Yeah. And the minute you open your soul up, when that recognition of that yearning that's already there is validated by something that feels like, okay, it's my permission slip, I can do this. Yes. Robin and I, we have such a similar story. It's so, it's so cool. But I think there are just so many women out there that have that same feeling like I'm an imposter at work and I should be happy with this role. And what's wrong with me? Why am I not mm -hmm. happy doing what I'm doing? And the fact that you were willing to listen to your heart is really exciting. And I, I want to hear from you, Sam, about yeah. you know, what was going on in your mind. Yeah. So it's funny because we actually have very similar stories in that, like, I think my journey started really early too. It was like a slow burn of the dark night of the soul. <laughs> <laughs> it was very similar in that I was, you know, I had gotten promoted to be an account director and I had been an account director for a while and it didn't take long for me to realize like, oh, this job doesn't get easier when you move up. You don't have more of a life when you move up. You actually have less of a life, more <laughs> responsibility. You're constantly at the mercy of somebody else's budget, somebody else's schedules. And so it just, it doesn't allow you to really have any autonomy or like a personal life. And around the same time that Ellen and I were working on Lego, I just started having really weird health problems. Like my legs had started going numb and I had like all these like weird things happening on my skin. And I was like, what is going on? And it was the same process of this constant rumination of like, okay, I'm looking at my next move. And, I, and I'm like, I knew at that point that I just didn't want to move up anymore. I, I was like, I don't want to get promoted because it's not where I'm meant to be. I'm not happy right now. I have no idea how I got this far, but I think there's a lot of pressure around these like external expectations of like what success looks like and, and how 
we are expected to contribute to society. And I had just like internalized all of that. And I was like, okay, this is the next thing on the list. Check that off. When I got to that point, I knew I had to leave. But like Ellen said, I didn't have a plan. But I was like, I can't stay in advertising. So I had been thinking about this for quite a while. And then my health just continued to deteriorate. So it was a lot of time spent traveling. And then that one fateful night with Ellen, where we <laughs> where we were talking and we just decided to do this. Looking back, I'm like, okay, we were a little bit crazy um, at the beginning <laughs> and like had no idea what we were doing. But there was also something really beautiful about like going and getting the paperwork drawn up that first day because it became real in that moment. And mm -hmm. that night in January, when we had that conversation, for me, it was a very easy decision to make. It's even cool now kind of to hear like Ellen reflect on her story because I remember having this moment where we had this book club where all these women of the agency got together and everybody for the first time in a long time had really started like opening up and talking about the way that they had been feeling, the stress they had been carrying and how alone they felt. I was like, you guys, this is the craziest thing. We are all here. We are all experiencing very similar things and yet we all feel alone. This is a problem. I think in a big way, that was a huge motivator for me to want to give back to people in our positions who are all struggling and all feeling these same ways and dealing with the same pressures and the same external expectations and sort of just try and figure it out. What you said is so true. You're all together feeling the same way, but yet you're all feeling so alone. And the fact that you guys actually got together, had this conversation, and then you actually did something about yeah. it. Not everybody does it. We can all talk a big game, but you don't actually act on it. And so I get what you're saying about because of who you both are and who, where you had gotten in your careers. To me, it sounds like you knew if you had that official, then you were going to just work for it. Whatever that was going to be, that's who you are in your it was, soul. You made the commitment. It was like, yes, it was like a marriage yes. almost. Like you went down at the justice of the peace and you got <laughs> hitched. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Now thinking back on it, you're right. It was totally like getting married. It really was. And and getting married with not like, it was like we had a singular vision, which was awesome. And I think it was really because our hearts were, even in, even in the subconscious, I think we were very much aligned because both of us were hurting so bad. And it wasn't until we went to Joshua Tree on this like almost like a vision quest kind of like trip for about four days. We got these big sheets of the sticky paper or whatever that we can like put over the walls and like all these markers. And we were just like literally just dreaming, allowing ourselves to dream. And part of that process was also what do we not want? What kind of life do we want to create? Not just what kind of business, but like what kind of lifestyle and life do we want to create now that we have the opportunity to set it from day one. Even then, I don't think we really fully knew ourselves at all. The dreams and things that we put there, I felt like it was almost with a, through a lens or a filter of like, I just want to feel better and be happy. That was it. It was almost like the bare bones. But I think the thing also that really aligned us was we were no longer in a system that was, it was just financially driven about greed and growth and that kind of like validation. We were more about like what's going to make us happiest. It's letting go of the ego, you yeah. know? And when I say ego, I mean money and titles and, and validation from these other, the other really, rather than from at the core, stripping things down, what mm -hmm. is going to make you happy? And actually hearing how you did this, you actually were treating yourselves like clients. Yeah. With all your, <laughs> your experience, like if you really look at it, you had the whole process down of how you would work with Lego or Harpo or Own when, when we worked together. But like it, it was that, like you were like doing that for you. That's huge. Yeah. And you were the right people to do that. Finally, we were able to ask ourselves this rather than asking a client or asking somebody else and like waiting to see if you said something right. Do you know what I mean? And we're validated by what they said back to you or how they responded to your reflection of them. Now it was just like, this is about us. We can actually focus on us, which sounds so weird to say out loud. But I mean, I think that's also the crux of what we're going through this year and learning. How do we redirect that focus back to ourselves and really evolve ourselves and learn what we need to learn and heal what we need to heal and stop looking externally so much at everything else and, and and what everybody else is thinking and doing and blah, 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 all that stuff. That's just really just distractions from our own truth. Can you just give us a quick overview of what the vision of daughters is? When we first started concepting daughters, like we were like, how do we feel better? 
we knew that we wanted to start a store. We were going to sell products to help women feel better and, you know, build resilience. And so we did a ton of research around quick, practical things that we can do that will actually make a really big difference, which is how we ended up finding aromatherapy. Your body physiologically responds to the sense of these oils and the way that you can use them. And for really busy working professionals, this is a very practical tool. So that grew into candles and aromatherapy through that, through other like small practices like journaling and journal prompts and but we talk about this all the time because now daughter's vision is so much bigger those are the tools that we use to help women come back to themselves to help people find moments and create rituals in their lives and that is really the way that we come back to our inner truths and the way that we figure out what we really want and then understand that we have the power to create what we want in our lives then on top of it we also started Woo New. So I don't know if you want to jump in and talk about Woo New, Elle. Yeah, so the podcast actually came through. Woo New's our podcast. And again, we had left our careers, started this whole process of just dreaming about what kind of company we wanted to create. And that kind of like kickstarted our own healing journeys. And again, I don't think we intentionally or, or were consciously trying to heal per se, because it's like you don't know what you don't know. We didn't know, you know? we needed it. <laughs> yeah, and we didn't know we needed it. We And, and honestly, I think you know, and I can only speak for myself here. I think what I had been experiencing throughout my whole life was a numbing out through being a workaholic and a lot of drugs, a lot of alcohol, partying a lot. It was a lot of numbing to not feel the pain of losing my father, you know? And so that grief was just like in there, stuck in there somewhere. And I don't think I ever felt like permission to feel, do you know what I mean? Like, I don't think I ever felt like it was a good thing to feel so deeply or to feel so much. And so I think as we were kind of going Going through this healing journey, we ended up trying breath work. It was Sam's first time. It might have been my second or third time, but we had this one breath work session in September of 2018 that was so powerful. And you know, my father's spirit was present and something that just completely changed my life and I got reconnected to my father through that experience and so that led me towards this like breathwork trajectory and really wanting to get certified as a breathwork coach I'm like looking back now because it, it feels all jumbled but it was almost like the universe was giving us opportunities to meet all these different healers and therapists we weren't even searching for it, it was just like kind of coming to us you know these opportunities to try our whole journey in creating daughters first just physically trying to feel better became much better deeper addressing the pain in our in our soul in our bodies like on a much deeper emotional level why not tell our story too and just tell more of a fish out of water story because both of us came from this very skeptical place of this is all bullshit <laughs> you know like what is reiki like you know, energy heal like what is this you know so we both came from this very very analytical intellectual place because of our digital backgrounds you know everything's data everything's like proven everything's you know very very cold and unfeeling you know and so we needed to kind of prove to ourselves that this stuff was legit and i think that was really what became the whole inspiration behind Wu Nu because if we were questioning all this stuff and we were starting to I mean we would come through different sessions just with our minds just jaws on the floor minds blown open the slow unraveling and, and and opening up and awakening of like the magic in the universe that we wanted to start deep diving into these different modalities to really understand it better for ourselves but also to pull anybody who's curious about any of this stuff anybody who comes from like a skeptical point of view it's like you want to have this little bit of a scientific mind Mind, almost like a I don't believe this mind because then the magic of it when it proves itself to you is even more powerful I totally agree I that's exactly what was happening and and you're just kind of like I have no idea what is happening at all but I want to know more that's really the journey right it's just constantly wanting to know more from a healing perspective Alan you talked about your dad and Sam you talked about your health how did you both heal and then let's talk about how it then became incorporated both in daughters and Wu Nu and then what you're both personally doing. It took a really long time to heal, honestly. We left in April of 2018, but I don't think that like I fully understood knowing how much I needed to heal by the time I even started to realize it, which was like around November, December of 2018. And at that point I had tried Reiki once and I had had this 
like insane experience where (laughs) the practitioner's hands weren't even touching me (laughs) and I'm laying on the table and all of a sudden like everything behind my eyes turns bright white and I can see these fluorescent colors coming in from the side and the top and the bottom and I was like what happened and I just went crazy trying to figure out what that was but at the same time we were trying other things like hypnotherapy and we did the breath work together and you name it we've we've probably tried it at least (laughs) once and really I just wanted to be like okay blow my mind again (laughs) like I was always just looking for that (laughs) I also was totally detached from my body and I think that was where a lot of my health problems were coming from like it was residual stress too much cortisol buildup and it was so bad for so long that I just stopped feeling it and I think that's where the issues came with with my legs so it took almost a year actually for me to come back around to Reiki and all of those other experiences contributed significantly to my healing but I think Reiki was such a gift from the universe at that point because I needed something very gentle. Any sensation was an overwhelming sensation when I first started healing. Reiki allowed me just to receive. I had gotten pretty heavy into meditation at that point. Like I had started meditating every day, but the Reiki was something, it was sort of like next level to that. Like my best meditations like Reiki could get me deeper, help me feel better longer. I loved it so much, but also I I wanted to like really engage and like open my connection to this healing modality so that I could embrace it fully. When I first started, I was like, okay, I'm just going to learn how to do it for myself. I'm just going to go through one and two. I don't need to like become Reiki master. I'm never going to teach. And then like, lo and behold, come around to Reiki master time. And I was like, yep, got to keep going. So while we've been doing Wu Nu and exploring these other modalities and loving the opportunity to bring some of these modalities to people who maybe think like meditation is the only option and sort of just help open that door for people has been really inspiring. And it's really helped both Ellen and I understand how much these healing modalities have helped us and inspired us to start our own healing practices. So now I'm a master Reiki practitioner as well as doing all of this stuff with daughters and Wunu on the side, but it's all connected. And the cool thing about Sam being a Reiki master too, is that it relates to her products because she can actually send like Reiki out the products and, and that energy is actually held within our products too, which makes even more powerful and uh, yeah I I constantly look back and I look at our different paths there are parallel paths but clearly on two different roads as we're also still joined doing you know everything for daughters but nothing has been a coincidence at all it's it's been like just again miraculous and mind-blowing how things have unfolded and worked out yeah well and so let's hear about what happened with you <laughs> very much like sam too it it's been a journey right and so we've been doing all these different things so one of which was family constellation work everything's like divine timing right a month before my birthday the breathwork coach that had guided us in that very first breathwork session that again blew open the doors for me and she had just sent me a name of a woman and she said you should totally check this person out she does she didn't even say the word family constellation I had no idea what the hell that was (laughs) like it was just check out this woman she you know I did a session with her and it was life-changing it was one of those things where I I looked at it and I said okay cool thanks I'll, I'll check it out and never looked at it at all until suddenly one day for whatever reason that text popped into my mind I was like oh I never really checked out what she had sent me so I looked at it and it was this woman I was reading her website and reading about family constellation work and then I realized that her next group session was literally on my birthday chills that just went through my body and like a a, like a green light going you need to do this it sounded really intense and it sounded you know like who wants to spend eight hours like crying on their birthday (laughs) you know it just sounded like this is not something you really want to do you know but I don't know why I just felt this pull towards it and so it was almost like a reluctant sort of like okay I need to sign up it was a group of people I want to say maybe no more than 25 or so we're all sitting in a circle basically what family constellation work at least what I experienced and this is my only experience so far but it was insanely powerful there was four constellations done that day and what a constellation is it's like role-playing the facilitator she selected four people very intuitively and then she would bring that person to her they would sit and talk to her for a little bit and again this is in front of the group, Sin talked to her.
her about what it is that they were struggling with. And then she would basically pick people from the group to role play whatever people, relatives, you know, whatever people or entities need to be represented in this activity or in this like recreation of what it is that they're going through. And so that person, whoever's constellation they're doing, they literally sit on the sidelines and they're just watching the whole thing. They're not even part of the constellation work. But for me, she, I was the first person she picked. So we just started talking and she's like, I just sense incredible sadness coming off of you. I wasn't feeling sad necessarily, you know, but she just, she just looked at me. She's just like, it's just, it's really heavy. And then she started asking me questions. And prior to the session, we had to like basically have a, a candle ceremony, a candle ritual where we gave gratitude to our ancestors. And my grandmother on my dad's side came through that session. So in my mind, I was thinking, okay, I think this is about her. Cause the whole family constellation work is really about healing generational trauma and healing ancestral wounds and things like that and so I started talking to her about my grandma and I don't know why this is this is how numbed out I was I think I was talking and I started realizing like oh my gosh my grandmother was alive when my dad died and I did not even remember that and so the whole constellation ended up being about my father's death and so she had me sit on the sidelines and she picked somebody to represent my dad my mom my paternal grandmother and my maternal grandmother and then there was a woman who represent me. So I'm basically watching these people in the middle of this pit. You know, I had to intuitively just position them in the middle of the room and I had no idea what, what I was doing. You know, she was like, just feel it out. There's no right, there's no wrong. And then slowly these people started basically, it's almost like the energy of the people that they were playing or representing started coming through. And the woman playing my mother just broke down in sobs. And she was just feeling like all the sadness coming through. Wait, and can I ask something? I'm yeah. so fascinated by this. <laughs> Did anything happen after you positioned them to make that energy start flowing or it just started? It just started. Whoa. Okay. It's an emptying out of your ego and allowing that. And it's almost like channeling in a, in a yeah. interesting way, you know, but it's a full body channeling where you're just like taking on that energy and it's coming through and you start role playing. You start talking to each other and playing out the deck. I heard my father apologize to my mom. I'm like getting emotional talking about it. But yeah, he would like apologize to my mom for leaving her and was telling her how proud he was that she had, you know, raised me and my brother and all on her own and that he was sorry that he had to leave and she apologized to him. It was just like really beautiful. And like it, it basically culminated in this huge, like at one point she subbed out the woman who played me and put me in the circle. And all of this just like, we're crying and like, it, like hugging together. And it felt like such a cathartic release. Clearly a massive energy shift happened among my family because I think what happened with that one session was a lot of pain was released, not just from me, but also my dad's spirit, my mother's spirit as well. And she's still living, you know, my two grandmothers as well, like who didn't really get to really say goodbye, you know, so it's like it was just it's still one of the most mysterious and baffling experiences of my life but I'm now seeing the aftermath of it and like how girl and I know when we had the conversation like that conversation has stayed with me I mean I couldn't remember what it was called but I <laughs> could remember how you felt I just gotta imagine for people who are listening I'm even thinking about Robin right now what a wonderful opportunity that could be, especially if somebody has left. And I can just see that being such a tremendous release and forgiveness and understanding of something that's happened in your past. So thank you for sharing that. I've never heard of that. And I've heard of a lot of stuff. I know. Well, and for your family and for your family. I love what you said. It's like ancestral. It's like yeah. just for you. It's so that it doesn't continue on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Does that work? It ripples backwards. You know, it's like if you don't look at time as this linear thing that we tend to look at it as, look at it in the quantum definition of it, everything you're doing in your lifetime now is rippling forward and backward. So you're affecting who you were even five years ago, even you as a little child. Mm -hmm. And I do remember this, like Sam and I were in New York just even like a week later in doing our first trade show. And that night, one of our friends, a Reiki master, it was amazing to meet May, but she wanted us to meet her friend Ingrid, who was a litigator, but also happened to be a tarot yeah. reader. She's and... a corporate litigator who does the most <laughs> incredible tarot readings. I'm like, it's so unreal. 
unreal. Unreal. And she makes her own. We also interviewed her too, but she makes her own tarot. She has her own tarot deck that is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Letterpress, gold edging. It's beautiful. She gifted both of us a reading that night at a restaurant. As she was looking at my cards, she just stopped and she's like staring at the cards. And I'm asking her, what is going on right now? And she said, I don't know. I just feel like I just see energy jumping back and forth from these two piles, you know? And then she just said, okay, let's just move forward, you know? So she's like, why don't you just put the piles back together? And so I did, and apparently like each of the piles represents past, present, and future, which I didn't know at the time. So the way you put it back together into one pile is, is usually kind of what the reading is about. I put it all together in one pile and she just stopped again. She was just staring at the cards and she goes, and again, this is a week after the family constellation work. She looked at me and she goes, you just jumped ancestral lines. And I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> She's like, I don't, you just like ended a karmic line for your family. And, and she has no idea what hell, what happened, you know, and, and I had to tell her, like, I just broke down. I just, I told her what had happened in that family constellation workshop. Mm -hmm. And so that was my validation or confirmation that something happened. Cause she saw it. It was like before she even read the card, she just saw it in the energy coming through the cards from past and present and future. However, like, I don't even really fully understand it myself, but yeah, blew my mind. I was like, okay, this stuff is real. Well, and as you said, how these experiences came to you, right? Like you guys were there for daughters. You didn't even know you were going to get this tarot reading. Yeah. This woman, it's like the universe coming together to be like, here you go. Here's, yeah. Here are some clues. Yeah. yeah. And so nice that Sam, you were there. Cause that's like often what, what yeah. Robin and I say to each other is when we're sharing these experiences, because you almost need somebody to be like, did, did you? Did <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank God for Sam. Like she's literally seen it from day one all the way through. <laughs> I know. And that was like what was so cool about starting Woo New too, was just that we were having all these conversations around these crazy synchronicities that like you just cannot make this stuff up. Like I, I mean, I have worked with multiple energy healers and mentors and like, there have been times where I'll come back from one. And I'm like, Ellen, you won't believe this. I didn't tell so-and-so at all about like what happened in this energy reading with my teacher, but then he saw the exact same past life and explained it to me in, a, in like perfect detail. And I was like, and they both saw it. <laughs> like, like there's no coincidences. So it's really cool to see the synchronicities. And then like, when they start to pop up everywhere and you're just like, oh my God, I'm, we're on the right path to something. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's really like why Karen and I initially got going on Seeking with Robin. And we wanted other people to have this experience of people who are at a crossroads and not sure what they should do or how they can heal. We wanted them to see that you can talk to different people who don't know you, don't know your story. They don't know each other. They may even have d different expertise, right? in the spiritual realms, but they will all tell you the same thing. And then you cannot deny it. You cannot deny when you see, when you hear the same thing from two people in detail, you can't, you have to say, what is this meant to show me? What do I need to learn from it? What do I need to do with that? And I think that, I mean, that's our goal. And that's, we all are experiencing that. Really. The way it's best that, that skeptics are the ones who are going through these times because they're yeah. the ones that, you know, are going to get that validation. So, so Ellen, can we step back? I just want to learn a little bit more, hear more about breath work. Cause that's something I don't know a lot about. It's been really amazing to be able to facilitate breath work. It's a somatic technique and it works with your sympathetic nervous system and it's really simple it's it's just a two-step mouth breathing technique so you're just taking a deep breath into your belly and inflating it like a balloon and then rolling it up to your heart space and breathing in more air and then letting it go gently so it's like a two-step breath so it's like breathe in through your belly through your mouth and then breathe into your heart space and then gently let it go and you're doing that, depending on who your breathwork coach is, you're doing that for anywhere between 20 to 45 minutes. So my sessions, I'm doing about 20 to 25 minutes and I ground people in. As you're breathing, what you're doing is it's activating your sympathetic nervous system, your fight, flight, or freeze. And so all that stuck energy, old trauma, old, you know, it usually comes through as like old memories or sudden realizations. It all starts surfacing. And so some people describe breathwork as being like, 
40 years of therapy in a session. It's also much like, you know, psychedelic journeying, you know, with mushrooms or, or LSD, anything like that, where the skeleton closet that you have inside of yourself where you've stuffed everything unconsciously gets opened and everything starts coming through and you're working with your subconscious and not your conscious mind. So I love the pairing of breath work with something like cognitive behavioral therapy, you know, where you can kind of talk it out and integrate what you're learning. But breath work, it just opens you up. You start to kind of like connect to your inner, your intuition, your inner compass, your inner voice, your higher self. And it also opens you up to have a direct line to source and spirit. So people will have visions during breath work. So like you're basically breathing actively for a short period of time. And then at the end, there's like this rest period, kind of like Shavasana and yoga. We're just laying there, breathing easy through your nose that point and just receiving and what I have found really powerful about breath work this year alone there's just incredible release you know it's really great for shadow work but I'm starting to realize also that breath work brings you to this deeper state of consciousness where you can use it for like heart coherence practice too where you're stepping into moments of love and joy and peace I've taken them on journeys where they're flying on a dragon you know and and just like and just simply or just flying with the birds where it feels fantastical but you're elevating your energy and you're lifting your your energy frequency up so it takes over your body i mean your your body is experiencing that as if it's actually happening so i call them like quantum journeys or journeys into quantum realities where it doesn't really matter like you can believe in dragons or not believe in dragons you know it doesn't really matter believe in unicorns believe in fairies it doesn't really matter because when you're experiencing that in those deep states of consciousness you are lifting your energy frequency and you're opening yourself up and you're expanding regardless and so it's almost allowing yourself to use your imagination again and realize that that is really the first step of manifestation is just allowing yourself to dream and to go into those spaces of imagination where everything is possible and you're no longer in that dense kind of frequency of frustration and, and fear and anger and you know all that stuff you're like suddenly lifted so yeah it's it's been incredibly powerful it's interesting i don't think that many people know what breath work is and there's such power in it how often are you doing it and how often would you suggest people do do it i do it usually like once a week if not sam and i also practice the wim hof method of breath work which is slightly different but i have people coming to my classes literally every single week or even every single session because now sam and i are partnering on these moon circles for every new and full moon and we incorporate akashic readings as part of that as well so sam's fac facilitating reiki as i'm guiding the breath work and that has been like a trifecta of and rob and i were talking about it earlier and i was saying i don't breathe i really don't <laughs> it's shocking I'm a runner. Yeah. And so as we were just, you were just having us do that exercise, it feels really good to do that. And, and for people who I think might have trouble meditating, that yes. could be a really nice, easy exercise or a way to kind of get into it. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. If you are stuck in traffic and you're trying to de-stress, I love going to the four, seven, eight breath uh, technique where you're just, you're taking in a breath into your nose actually for a count of four, and then you're holding it for seven and then you're breathing out as if through a straw for mm -hmm. eight. So it's called the four, seven, eight breath, but it helps to deactivate your body and bring you back into a, a calmer state. But yeah, it's breathing is one of those, like, because it's both unconscious and conscious, it's so underrated. Well, and Sam, tell us about how you are practicing Reiki. I know what Karen and I have found is that everybody practices a little bit differently. Their process is a little different. They're seeing different things and using their gifts in a different way. So we'd love to know how you're doing it. So I've had multiple mentors, teachers that I work with. So I've sort of incorporated things from all of them into my practice. And ironically, coming from a situation where I was totally detached from my body, I now, like the way that I connected with the energy was physically, like I can feel every sensation now. The energy moves my body when I'm working with someone else. And so I'll facilitate distance Reiki um, and I also do it in person. It's just that, you know, very few people are out here in the desert. So, <laughs> but really it just starts with like a quick conversation of like, hey, what's going on? Tell me about how you're feeling. And then I'll do a session that I actually will combine 
um, probably depending on what's going on, like 30 to 45 minutes of active Reiki. And then I do some channeling and I pull Oracle cards too. So I found that people really like sort of having something tangible to take away from it, but also the messages that we receive afterwards and, and the conversation that we always have afterwards is about how they can best integrate the healing and not just what to expect physically, but like Reiki opens up doors to everything. And especially if you're pairing it with another modality like breath work or sound healing or anything like that, it's like, I think that those Oracle cards can really help people understand just like not just physically how to move forward with that, but also like, what are the messages that they're meant to receive? And like, what are the challenges that they're working through right now? And like, how can understanding those better help them come back to a place of more compassion for themselves and more joy in life in general? Really early on, I had this crazy experience where I like, I was sitting in this meditation and I had just started practicing Reiki. Like there was some energy in my torso that was stuck and my teacher had taught me this technique where you can just, I was like, all right, we're just going for it. And I, and I, but I unintentionally in that process opened this channel of energy that was far more powerful than Reiki energy and a totally different channel than Reiki energy. And it was like bursting out of my, out of the top of my head. And it was so strong that my head was like pulled back and like my neck popped. And I was like, oh my God, my body went numb. And I was like, what do I do? So I ended up just like pulling in this loving kindness meditation. Slowly my head came back down and then like slowly I could start to feel the sensation in my body again and I opened my eyes and it was like I could feel the sensation like half your face is underwater and I could feel the waves there was like a clear line that went across my face and and the bottom half felt like silk it's like I just sat in that for like 20 or 30 minutes because I was like what is happening <laughs> So then I found another energy healer who really opened the doors for me to build a deeper relationship with the energy healing in general. And I think that's where the more exciting things start started to really open up. So, you know, you see everything from like detached vortices in your chakras to like entities to aliens. I know it sounds crazy, but <laughs> no, it's we true. <laughs> we, we need to talk about aliens and entities. And just say, no, there's no weird here. Like, yeah. Yeah, I'm like no. Exactly. So actually that energy healer who helped me, who sort of opened the doors to these other forms of energy, he had told me before I moved out to the desert, he was like, I don't want to freak you out, but there are a lot of things that you're going to start experiencing. And he was like, you know, don't get scared about it, but like aliens, you know, and he just threw that into the conversation like it was nothing. And I went home and I called Ellen and I was like, what the fuck, aliens? <laughs> And I was like, okay, I guess I was like, I'm just going to choose not to think about that because that's super weird. <laughs> then lo and behold, I moved out to the desert and there was one day where I went out and I was doing like a self-healing in the desert. So I had just opened some Reiki channels and I was meditating a little bit. And then all of a sudden it was like, I could feel these like beings come in around me and, and we, and I was sitting there and I could physically feel them grab my hands and we were sitting in a circle holding hands and it was like this really beautiful I don't even know how to explain it it was like we had all been there and done that together before I felt like it could have gone on forever so at one point I was like okay I'm sweating bullets out here like it's time to go <laughs> and then they I could feel them like wrapping up this ball of energy and then they and I and then they like inserted it into my torso and I could feel this energy is like, as soon as they plugged it in, it was like energy was just like shooting out of me. And I had no idea what happened, but then coincidentally, I had just found another teacher right after that, who we also interviewed on Wunu, her first session on me. She goes, okay, so I don't want to freak you out because <laughs> I told her about this meditation. And I was like, there were these beings there. And I was like, I'm, I'm just curious if you, if like what happened and who that was. And she was like, so I don't want to freak you out, but I'm seeing aliens. And she was like, well, were you scared of them? And it's all about the energy, right? And I was like, no, it actually felt like a very coming home. So we talked about it a little bit. But then when she got into my healing, she was like, okay, I'm seeing something in your torso right now. And I had forgotten to tell her that part. And I was like, okay, so then there was this ball of energy oh now that you mention it. <laughs> and she, this part's where it gets really weird. She goes, she goes, so it's a baby, but it's not a human baby. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck is happening in my life right now? And so she went in and she was like, okay, I'm going to go in and clear it. So she went in and she cleared it. And she was like, you know, she was like, it was nothing that was going to hurt you or anything. She's like, I'm hearing charge. It was charging you. 
And I was like, charging me for what? And like, still, I'm not entirely sure like what that Whoa, charge like, was what all would about. Have that been? You know, but- yeah, but there was like a, an alien, like the energy of this alien baby inside my torso, like charging my body after this like <laughs> ceremony that I had with them out in the desert out of nowhere. You know, my last session with her, we were talking about, I was like, oh, I saw this spaceship while I was doing my Wim Hof breathing. I, I couldn't see anything inside of it or like a lot of detail, but I know it was a spaceship. And she was like, oh yeah. She was like, you went far. She was like, they took you like out. And she's like, I'm seeing actuarians right now. And I was like, okay. And she's like, but they won't tell me anything else. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are. <laughs> when you're in an experience like that, the terminology must be very challenging, right? It is. You know, it could be higher self. It could be angels. It could be so many different things. And so in my mind, I'm thinking, is it an extraterrestrial type of entity versus it being an angel or a guy? How did you feel that difference? So- I literally just asked that same question. <laughs> <the other> <laughs> Yeah, you know, I was like, is it the Arcturian angel like yeah, coming like, through, what? or is it are they angels? Like, well, I, I can't they tell. They appear as angels, right? So yeah. I was reading about that yesterday, actually. So sometimes Arcturians will appear to us as angels in angel form because they don't want to scare us. <laughs> it's nice of them. Animals, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm so sensitive to energy. I can feel the different vibrations between an angel and a spirit guide but sometimes had aliens not come up so frequently (laughs) in this last year i don't know that like i would have acknowledged that that was a spaceship that i saw i mean it looked like a stereotypical spaceship that you would but i also recently finished this course that she offers around channeling and part of the practice that we do in the homework for that course is connecting to the different realms so the star realms the different earth realms the astrological realms like i mean you name it we've played with it and sometimes not even knowing whose energy necessarily it is but just being careful and making sure that you've cleared your space and that you have called in the angels to like protect the space and that you're being really attuned to the energy so that when you have other spirits or imposters like sort of trying to tap into this channel that you've opened you can tell when the vibration is low or off and then you can clear that out and continue channeling but it's a it's a process for sure this ascended master hilarion started working with me a few weeks ago i could feel him and it was this very like expansive open loving energy and he would come in and it was like he's kind of like a little glowing like green aura but it's like in the shape of a person and there's always just this like fluorescent rainbow in front of him and I didn't know who he was I had to ask my teacher and so she went in and she she was like oh that's the, an ascended master and like neither of us had ever heard of him before but identifying that has allowed me to sort of like build a relationship with him and then slowly over time you get introduced to new people and then of course when you're working with someone else you get introduced to their guides and then sometimes they bring in people like she brought in some 5D surgeons that had to like reattach my throat chakra at one point. So you like have to go through all of these experiences to know what they're like so that when you're working with other people, you you know what you're working with. It's been really cool. I mean, damn. Like, That's unreal. Gosh. Like we started off, like it seems like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what a journey this conversation is with you guys. Like, I had no idea how far you were. Yeah. I'm just like ready to just like get on a plane and just come on I out. I agree. I want to come to the desert. I think people are going to ask what and who are Arturians. There are, I mean, I don't even know. I don't even want to take a guess. Elle, do you know like thousands or millions of star being races? Yeah. I mean, they're they're from Ar- Arcturus, that star. star. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And and I want to say the reason why I had asked that question earlier, like, are they the Arcturians or is it angels, is because the, the Arcturian gateway was open. And I remember reading a blog article about this gateway opening and she had channeled a message from the Arcturians and they're very, very loving. They are, a, yeah, just a different star being the crazy thing is so i was i every night i sit out and i watch the stars out here because there's no light pollution and you can see them much better and i'm always telling ellen about how i'm like i saw another ufo tonight because it's like okay (laughs) i'll be watching the stars and then all of a sudden i'll see something move and it looks like seemingly looks like it could be a satellite it's kind of the same brightness as a satellite it's kind of the same speed as a satellite but if you look at it you realize it's like stopping and going and zigzagging and like some of them will totally change directions and some of them will do these like huge circles and some of them will get really bright and get super dim and then you can see it like skip it's like it does this thing and then it appears over here and it's so crazy (laughs) and so 
I didn't know about the gateway opening, but every night when I go outside now, like I can see and feel orbs coming, they come down from the sky and I can feel them like, and they'll just like sit, hover around me. And so I was sitting out one night and I looked at the sky and there was this huge gray rainbow streak across the sky in a very specific place. And I kept looking at it thinking, okay, that can't be from a plane because it lasted for like 40 minutes. It can't be a cloud. There was not a cloud in the sky in this whole area. And I was, and I just had no idea what it was. So I just sat and watched it for like 40 minutes. And then Ellen told me about this gateway opening. And then I'm like reading about the Arcturians <laughs> and especially the energy in particular right now is this gateway open. They're here to help us transcend basically as humans. I have a teacher who talked about like sometimes they'll come down and this sounds totally crazy, but they can actually like change space and time, like physical space and time. So it's like they, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the show Flash with the superhero, but like when he moves really fast, everybody else like stops and stays still. They can like do these major, these major like cleanups or shifts where they'll like come down, everything will like stop and they're moving so quickly, like in this alternate dimension, they'll shift things around and then everybody moves again when they close it and it's like these crazy portals that they come in and so apparently i've been working with them cool <laughs> yeah and maybe like i'll have more information later who knows it comes when it comes That's awesome. <laughs> thank you for sharing i think we just blew a lot of people's minds <laughs> i know they're gonna think we're so crazy now yeah. but trust me it's totally true fine with that you know yeah, we just we started very you know very normal yeah <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I just am so grateful for you both that you have followed your path. So grateful too that you've come together and that you've been able to help each other as as teachers and soul friends. And you know, you need to have that support as you go through the fact that you've had the courage just to go there and and really explore this and now are willing to share it on your podcast and you know with your students that are learning from you now, I think is it's gonna help so many people more than you know and that will influence this time going forward. Thank you for what you guys do too. It's like it I honestly don't think I would be here if I didn't have Sam to lean on as a partner. I mean, it's it's like, I can't even imagine going on this alone. And when I see other women who are coming together and partnering up and trying to help bring the consciousness, you know, more like expand the consciousness and like bring all these things to the forefront and speak about it in such personal ways, like, it takes a lot of guts and a mm -hmm. lot of bravery to put this stuff out there and be like, you know what, it may sound crazy to you. At one point, it probably did sound crazy to, you know, it for sure sounded crazy to us, you know? <laughs> And it was only a short two years ago that it was just like, w these words would never have come out of my mouth. Right. Literally ever. I like, Sometimes <laughs> I hear myself say things and I'm like, what is happening right now? <laughs> In a weird way, sort of exploring some of these things that people are so unfamiliar with is kind of in itself, both empowering and a little bit isolating because people don't really understand it. And a lot of people aren't necessarily comfortable talking about it. So the more we talk about it, the more we normalize it, which is really exciting, but also it's such a relief to have somebody like Ellen around who I can like call no matter what is happening and be like, okay, I have to- I saw aliens. <laughs> yeah. I'm an alien baby, how about that? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, can, can we back up here? Because <laughs> it just makes you feel like you're a little less crazy. <laughs> What you guys have been doing is so inspirational. Like I, I'm always getting hooked on you. Like every video, I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> what? <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> There's so many people to talk to. It's, it's endless, by the way, mm -hmm. can, because we're all gonna continue to evolve. And if we can help one another, we get to become more of the oneness that we need. Like if we can just continue to journey and think of ourselves as these souls and these human bodies, but coming from who knows where, <laughs> who knows what star galaxy we came from or <laughs> what planet or you know what past life we had but it all it helps make up who we are right now and that's what we do you know I can have conversations like this all day? Yeah, us so, too. <laughs> I know. How can people work with you individually? And can you tell us a little bit what we can expect from daughters now and over the holidays and, and the near future? <laughs> so individually, my energy healing practice is I'm on Instagram as at Catalyze Your Current or Catalyze Your Current at gmail.com. And I just book sessions individually as, and then every full moon and new moon, we, I work with Ellen and we work with another healer named Nina who does the Akasha records readings and Ellen facilitates the breath work and then 
and I do distance Reiki and we've had really incredible groups come through for that. We always include the registration links for those events on our Instagram handles as well. And, and daughters, we're heavy into holiday season, which is really <laughs> exciting. Our website is wearealldaughters.co. If anybody wants to go and look at the products and check it out. And there's a link on the website as well to our Woo New podcast, which is on Instagram at Woo New podcast. We've created a, a small ritual box around sleep, one around bath, and then we also have one around journaling. That's created by Reiki master and life coach Susanna Peace Lavelle. Those are the three different boxes that are great for gifting, especially during the holidays. Yeah. And for my breathwork practice, I've been doing what I call breathe every single Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific. You can find me on Instagram at breathe.dtla for downtown Los Angeles, which is where I'm located. I'm in awe, I'm in awe of both of you. I can't, I'm just, I love, look what you have done in two years, you guys. <laughs> look at your journey and look what, you, you know, you look how you're utilizing 2020 and everything. I, we all, you know, we all know this is all on purpose, but you are taking this time and look at the gifts that you're sharing with everyone to bring them closer to who they really are. It's really just magical and incredible. And I'm honored to know you both. Just thinking as you're both talking, how I wish that we could take you back to those two selves who are getting ready to <laughs> leave and just give them a glimpse of the two faces I'm looking at right now and how you're just like irradiating what you're doing. You are, you are, and you're baby. Sad, like, it's true. It would be just so great to beam you back there for just a minute so you could see that. And, and for anybody who's listening to your story to feel that, oh my gosh, this could be me too. You guys sure are a great example of not only listening to that, but pushing forward and, and really making it happen. So congrats to you both. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. You yeah. for making us so comfortable. This is awesome. I know. Love it. <laughs> love you. Thank you guys a lot of love. love yeah. Guys. Oh my gosh. Thank so much fun. Thank you so, so much. So great to meet you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.